Welcome to Monster Monday. So I watched the absolutely incredible Chernobyl miniseries on HBO last week. Uh, I talked about it on my channel. I gave it a glowing review, a glowing recommendation, blew the thing front, right, and center, whatever. So I, after watching all of that, um, it, of course, gave me the desire to rewatch Chernobyl Diaries, just because I, as amazing as that show was, I was just, I, I've been looking up, like, everything I can on YouTube of, like, Chernobyl and what it's like now and all this stuff. I'm, like, obsessed with Chernobyl at the moment. And so I was like, oh, man, I gotta watch Chernobyl Diaries. Um, and I saw this in theaters, and I'm not sure that I've seen it since, but... I thought I remembered liking it, but that was about all I could remember on it. So um, now, do uh, freaking um, contrary to popular belief, this is not a found footage movie. I know it, a lot of people quote it and and cite it as a found footage movie. People are like, oh, it's one of my favorite found footage movies, or it's a you know, it's one of the bottom of the barrel found footage, whatever. But they almost always refer to it as a found footage movie. It is not. Um, it. I will say that it kind of has a guerrilla filmmaking kind of feel to it, like um, Gorilla, not Gorilla. Huge difference. Captain Ron, anybody? Um, but yeah, it it just feels it, it's all handheld, and it feels found footage. So I get why people might remember it this way. And it starts found footage, and there's actual like found footage in it. They actually find a phone that has footage that they found on it um so there are found footage elements and this was uh, written by uh oren pelly uh, the guy who did paranormal activity so uh it, it makes sense that people would remember this as found footage but it is not um well okay so the first thing to say the girls in this movie especially the blonde wow just unreal like <laughs> i was having a really hard time focusing on anything except for that girl's cleavage it was insane. I was just like, she is in Paranormal Activity, the ghost dimension. So a little or in a connected universe there. Um, she's also been in something else. Um, her name, uh, Skylar, right? Yeah, Skylar from Paranormal Activity. Um, okay, so they're, they're out, you know, in Europe and they're doing their thing and uh, they want to, or no, they're not in Europe. They're they're in the fucking like Ukraine or the hell are they? I don't know. But they say that they're they're gonna you know let's go to let's go to Pripyat. Um, and so their friend there is like, have you ever heard of extreme tourism? And there's this guy. I think his name is like Yuri, and he takes them in. It's like let's go into Chernobyl, like by Chernobyl, by Pripyat, which. I understand the fascination, and honestly, I don't know. Would I have went back before this documentary, or, well, this uh, miniseries? Probably not. But maybe. Now? Fuck no. Hell no. I wouldn't get anywhere near that place. Hell no. But, um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't... Chernobyl. Chernobyl is something that I knew a teeny tiny bit about back when I saw this movie. So uh, the information on it was just, it was a nuclear meltdown. And that's really all we knew about the uh, the event all that much here in America, if you didn't look into it yourself more than just what you heard in a movie or, a, you know, Bill Murray and Scrooge and uh, whatever. Um, so I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think I'd go in, especially how sketchy it gets. Like, when they pull up to the gates and the guy's like, oh, no, they're not allowing people in today. And we're going to go the back way and all this shit. Hell no. Hell no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, so, Yuri goes down there. Yuri, I think that's his name. I think I have it written down. I watched this, like, four or five days ago. And I waited for it to do, uh, do it on Monster Monday. So I'm, I've watched a ton of shit since I watched this. I think that's what his name is. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But um, I think I'm mixing this up with Botched. Oh, I love Botched. Fucking Yuri. Ah, 
botched is amazing. Um, but so he goes and he, he puts his hand in the water by Chernobyl. Fuck that. Absolutely not. No way. You would, I would never touch any water anywhere near that fucking reactor. Hell no. Um, and then there's like this mutated fish that's up on shore and you like touch it and it's it, uh, horrible. I would be like, nope, take us out of here. Absolutely right now. Um, and if you go online, um, as of a few years ago, I, lo- I read the um, trivia on this, you actually can book a hundred dollar tour to Pripyat. You can actually, somebody will take you in for a hundred bucks. Fuck that you can't take anything i also found out in in here and i don't know if this is true it probably is but people went into privia because everyone had to leave everything behind if you know the story all in like an like no five minutes like they just had to leave right then and there with nothing they couldn't take anything they literally couldn't take anything even if they wanted to it's all fucking contaminated but people would come in supposedly i don't know if it's true or not but it sounds like it would be true looters would come in and they would take shit and they would sell it to people and people would get sick because it was radiated horrible that is absolutely horrible what this is such i mean nothing in this movie is even close not even one one millionth as terrifying as the actual event of chernobyl i don't care how many monsters you throw at the screen mutated this whatever nothing is even slightly close to how fucking terrifying actual Chernobyl was. Um, but just, yeah, just thinking about that, like people taking shit from there and going and selling when, when it's like, you know, setting off the, uh, the meters and all that. I will give credit to this because I just watched the uh, Chernobyl thing and, and, and they, you know, that's a really accurate um, miniseries uh, to, the, to the actual events and, and the uh, facts in it. And they actually, when, when uh, Yuri or whatever the hell the fuck his name was in this, uh, is talking to them and he's telling them what's going on and what happened and all that. And Reactor 4 and it was a systems test and it was blah, blah, blah. It was all 100% accurate. I was really uh, impressed by that. A lot of the times when you watch these kinds of things, you're like, that's not what happened or this is what happened. So I thought that was pretty cool that they actually got all the information from whatever I heard in this movie. All the information was accurate. I was, I was impressed by that. Um, and um, some someone sabotages their van. Now, this is the movie. I went to the theater with the mother of my children, Jen, and she laughed her ass off about the bear running around inside the building. And we've still to this day joke about it because I think it's totally legit that a bear could be there in an abandoned city. Why not? And she's like, well, it'd be irradiated and, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I, there's animals in the area. Like, I just don't see. And we have fought or argued about this forever. So anytime, you know, not anytime. I've only seen it twice. But um, anytime this movie gets brought up, that is always what we talk about. And I actually had to record the scene and send it to her um, when I saw it. And she was laughing. Um and so they go back and the, somebody's sabotaged the van. I'm guessing these Chernobyl hills have eyes. The Chernobyl has eyes. Creature people, descent looking fucking things. Uh, sabotage the van. Why? I have no idea. Um, they're eating them. Of course, they're cannibals, right? If they're mutated, they've got to be cannibals. That's how it works. Um, and uh, Jesse McCartney, McCarthy, isn't that his name? Uh, the, the, the actor, uh, his leg is absolutely obliterated. This thing is mutilated. There is no way. Like sometimes you see movies where his leg isn't that bad or like I remember in The Ritual, I was looking at it and they were kind of giving their friends shit. Like, dude, you need to walk. We need to get the fuck out of here. And you look at his leg and it's, it's bad, but it's definitely walkable. His leg looks like it got caught in a fucking blender, a ninja. Okay, that thing was chopped suey, man. There was no way that guy was going anywhere for any reason. When they And it's a tough situation because they come back and they're like, we need to go. And he's like, I literally can't. I cannot go anywhere. And you guys can't carry me. And I'm stuck 
in a place where there's radiation levels that if I stay here overnight, you know, we could get sick. I mean, you're not going to probably get sick overnight there now, but still, you don't want to be there. Uh, every time, every day you're there is not a, is not a good day on your body. <sighs> um, and I like that, uh, you know, when, when they're running from these things, that the chick actually goes back and grabs the gun. Smart, smart. Uh, and then, oh, the girl falls in the water, and then her boyfriend jumps in to save her, and he's getting attacked by whatever the hell these creatures are, these, like, piranha-mutated piranha things in the water. Um, that, was, that was freaky, just because falling into the water right outside of Pripyat, like, in between that and Chernobyl... And somehow they get from like Pripyat and, and Chernobyl are pretty far apart. Like walking distance, no. Like it's it's not that close. It would take a while to walk from Pripyat to, to Chernobyl. So somehow they end up there on foot. Whatever. It they get there. Um, but yeah, she falls in that water. Whoa, no, my God, I don't think you'd survive once you got there. Once you got out of there. Um, they find cables to put into the van, which is, um, okay, sure. I don't know if you could just throw those on. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a car guy, but I don't know. I don't think that would work. But regardless, uh, those cables are radiated for sure. Um, so you're definitely going to have to get rid of those once you get back. But that's the least of their concerns. Um, and when they come back and the van has been flipped, that was scary shit, man. Oh, it's just gone. Oh, that was terrifying in the moment. Um, the found footage that they find, super lame. Super, super lame. Um, the guy won't leave his bro, his brother. I completely understand this. My brother Nathan, I wouldn't leave him for fucking nothing for any reason on planet Earth. You couldn't get me out of anywhere without him. So I know some people would be like, just leave, you know, yelling at the screen. I completely understand his character in that moment. My brother... I'm going for him. Now, if it was my other brothers, eh, maybe. <laughs> but Nathan, 100%. He, I'm going back for him. The kid that's standing there, and they're, like, walking towards her, and she's, like, this really pale light, and she's got, like, blonde hair. and what? Terrifying. She looks absolutely scary as fucking hell. And then all these creatures start running in. Um, <clears throat> and Natalie's taken... And uh, Michael, who's the boyfriend of the of the tourists that joined them on the thing, I think he's the best of them. Like he seems like the most rational or the most logical, and uh, would probably have the best chance of surviving this. Even though he dies, like in the middle here, I I don't know. For me, he makes the smartest choices throughout the movie. Um, and are they eating them? Because when they find their bodies later, they're not eaten at all. So what are they doing to them? Like, you're not one of us, so we're going to kill you. And, like, when they find the body of one of them, it's not even... There's no markings. Or they just snap their neck, and I don't know. Um, so that was that, that left a lot to be desired, because this movie could have went full-blown chaos, crazy fucking gore, them ripping them apart, biting shit out of them. The monsters in this are not very well used. Um, the tension in this, at times, is okay. This movie has such... A, an amazing location to shoot from. Like, I feel like... I actually would have preferred this to be found footage. I think it would have been better suited for found footage. Um, but the story itself around Chernobyl is way scarier than anything they could have done, but that doesn't mean they couldn't have done something scary. I'm pointing out things that I find terrifying, like falling into the water by the reactor, uh, or, well, the, the power plant, or um, that girl and stuff. There are creepy things and there are things I like about this movie overall I was mostly meh about this on this watch it was okay it was fine it's not something I'm probably ever going to watch again but because I'm obsessed with Chernobyl right now I just I just had to look for it and uh, they did a really good job of making it look like Pripyat though I was very impressed by that because when I looked I was like did they go there and film for like a little bit just to get some shots of the city like of the actors and I'm guessing that would probably be a stupid thing to do. So I didn't think they would, but no, they didn't. Um, but it really did look a fuckload like it. So they found something really very similar. Um, and then they, yeah, they, they, Natalie is the one that's found completely intact. 
so they're not eating them I, I just don't get that um and then they find that they're at chernobyl then they they're down there and they're in chernobyl and you can see their faces have been burned by the radiation and whatnot um that was great i i that's the scariest fucking thing like running from these creatures and when you're running towards like your only safety is to run towards you know a fucking open nuclear reactor <laughs> like how horrible is this situation for these people and then they're grabbed by scientists and guards and and soldiers and whatnot and one's thrown into a cell with a bunch of these fucking uh mutated creatures they i guess as the story goes in this um did they really evacuate everyone from privet or are they just you know um did they cover it up and keep a bunch of the mutated people that were there and they're just letting them run free like why are they out uh, maybe they explain this like they broke free or something but they shouldn't be out right and they would have let these people go but I don't know. The whole like scientist cover up thing, stupid. Just stupid. I, I don't see the point in that. Um, I just the way it plays out and all that, nah, meh. Like, why are they out? Why are they running around? Like, you don't want anyone to know about them, but I guess it's a containment. Like, that's why they were, that's why they shut it down was because they had broken out and whatnot. Sure, okay, I'm sure that's what they said in the movie. I forgot by now, but I don't know. The scientists and the cover up and all that, I guess it makes sense. Um, but I just like the idea of like a Hills Have Eyes scenario that they're just like living in Chernobyl and no one even knows that they're there. And at night, like, if you get stuck there somehow, then they come out to feed. Like, that would just be better to me. Like, why wouldn't the government just kill them? That makes no sense to me. Why would they keep them all contained and then kill people who came and saw them when they have them all right there in confinement? Like, if they were out, this is why I'm saying the, 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 the soldiers thing is just stupid to me. Just kill them. Get rid of them. They're fucking mutated creatures. What are you going to do? Rehabilitate them? Try to, like, they're, I'm sure they're experimenting on them or whatever the hell they're supposed to be doing there. But if it's a secret like that, just get rid of them. Burn the bodies. Like, simple. Just stupid. So, I don't know. The story didn't work for me. I thought the scares were fairly lame. There are some good moments to it. I think uh, the girls are really hot. I think the location and the setting and all that's awesome. I know that the director had, or the uh, writer, Oren, had to um, apologize because people thought it was insensitive to put something there. That's stupid. Did they say the same thing about fucking James Cameron's Titanic? Like, that was a horrible disaster. And he put a fucking love story on there, a romance movie on one of the, mo one of the biggest disasters in, in American history. That's silly to me. No. This is a totally wide-open event to play a horror movie off of in a fantastic setting for one. It's just this one didn't capitalize on it. But I'd love to see another one now. Now that Chernobyl's big again, I, I bet you a, another story like this would be greenlit. Um, but people would probably try to compare it to this, which would be lame, but hopefully we'll get something else. Anyway, guys, uh, see you next week.